Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today on our complimentary webinar, Optimizing Your Recruitment Marketing Through Strategy, Process, and Technology. My name is Nissa and I will be your moderator for this session. Today's presenters are Prince, uh, Daria Friedman, Principal Analyst, Talent Acquisition for Brandon Hall Group, Ian Alexander, Vice President of Marketing for Telemetry, Stephen Schwander, Director of Client Solutions for Telemetry. I would like to extend a thank you to Telemetry for sponsoring today's webinar. They are an enterprise recruiting software that leverages your existing systems and unifies all of your talent acquisition activities into one recruitment marketing platform and partner ecosystem. The result is a modern, integrated recruiting platform that enables you to get more candidates and more visibility to optimize all of your recruiting operations. Telemetry compliance combines a modern interface and supremely usable recruiting tools with the kind of enterprise scalability and seamless integration that comes from 15 years of experience. For more information, please visit their website at www.telemetry.com. And now a little bit about Brandon Hall Group. We are a research and analyst firm that empowers excellence in organizations around the world through our research and tools. Our vision is to inspire a better workplace experience. We have world-class research, data, and expertise across all areas in human, human capital management. Currently, we have open surveys in extended enterprise learning, state of talent acquisition, and HCM technology. We would love to hear from you. In exchange, you can receive free gift cards, research reports, and more. To participate, please visit our website at www.brandonhall.com and click on Open Surveys. This presentation is being recorded. The playback and slides will be provided to everyone within 48 hours of the webinar in a follow-up email. Be sure to read that email because we will announce the winner of the $250 Amazon gift card drawing. Also, if you would like to download a copy of the presentation now, you can find it in the handout section. And if you would like to ask a question um, for the presenters, please do so in the question box. And now I'll turn it over to Daria so we can get started with the agenda. Thanks, Nissa. I'm very excited to be here to discuss a topic that I love, recruitment marketing. I'm also very excited to welcome Ian Alexander and Stephen Schwander from Telemetry who will be joining in on the conversation. Good Ian, morning, Daria. Stephen, would you like yeah, good afternoon, morning. good morning, depending on where everybody is, and, and, and I just would say that uh, from telemetry side, we're super excited to be uh, participating in the presentation of this research because when you shared this with me uh, back in December, the, the, the potential research, uh, we were just so excited by the content and, uh, and the, uh, the promise of the results that we just had to be a part of it, so glad to be here today. And I'll just say hi well. and, and ditto. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, as an analyst, I see this particular aspect of talent acquisition as very dynamic. And technology is really improving the way in which organizations find and attract talent. So first, I'm going to highlight key findings from our recently published research report, uh, the positive recruitment marketing research, the positive impact and this opportunities of recruitment marketing. And then I'm going to clarify where organizations are in terms of their recruitment marketing maturity levels and what it takes in terms of best practices to increase recruitment performance and improving hiring and organizational metrics like time to hire and employee engagement. And then Ian and Stephen will be discussing technology solutions that really propel recruitment marketing and they will also speak about some of their client experiences with that technology. And finally, I'm really looking forward to the Q&A session, so please don't wait until the end to ask your questions. We're eagerly looking forward to them. 
So uh, the first thing is I always like to start the webinar off with a poll to see what our audience is thinking and then compare your responses to our survey responses. So please take a few moments to answer this question and then we'll compare your responses to our survey responses and see if there's any differences. And so what, which are your most pressing problems that impact recruitment marketing effectiveness? Um, is it lack of full cycle metrics from sourcing to hire, attracting quality candidates, skilled talent shortages, lack of sourcing metrics, or a significant drop off of candidates during the application process? So please, you know, to make your choice and uh, we'll see how it compares with our survey responses. You know, I'm always so interested in this type of information because it tells me where organizations' pain points and uh, what organizations need to move forward. And in many cases, technology can really sort of alleviate that pain point uh, by automating and improving practices. So Nissa, how are we doing? We have about 80% of the attendees that oh, have voted. Oh, that's great. Would you like me to close great. the poll? Sure. Yeah, I think that's good. 80% is great. Great. Wow. Okay. So uh, the top response, as I would have expected, is attracting quality candidates at 32% followed by the lack of full cycle metrics from sourcing to hire, then skilled talent shortages, then drop off of candidates during the application process, and then finally a lack of sourcing metrics. So let's see how these results compare to what we found. And so as you can see, uh, the top challenge always seems to be attracting quality candidates. And that's true today, as we just saw in this little poll, and it's also true in past years. In fact, our 2015 hiring practices survey uh, showed that attracting talent was also the top choice there at 64%. So it's the, almost the same percentage. And then comes skilled talent shortages, sourcing metrics, lack of full cycle metrics, and applicant drop off. What that tells me, and just so you know, there were more answer choices to that list, and those are the top ones that surfaced. So what that tells me is that organizations need help, and that many of them are not sure where the problem is, and they're not sure how to improve their recruitment marketing practices. And we're going to see more about that as we move along. So I'm wondering, Ian, does this jive with uh, what you see in the market? Yeah, I mean, it's funny, the poll is that way, and we recently, uh, we, we hear that, and we recently did our own uh, recruitment marketing uh, technology survey, and 72% uh, was our top uh, answer there, which is lack of quality candidates. Wow, interesting. So everybody's seeing uh, the same thing. Interesting. So let's see how recruitment marketing can deliver impact. And so I know some organizations may think that if they develop authentic employer brand messaging and they add it along with visuals to their career site and to their job postings, that that is recruitment marketing. Well, you know, they're right. Employer brand messaging is an important aspect of recruitment marketing. But what they're missing is the how and where, how to convey those messages, how to extend the reach of those messages, how to manage the candidate relationship, and where to advertise those positions. And technology plays a huge role in automating and managing recruitment marketing. You know, think back to those not so distant days where organizations just posted their positions and prayed for candidates. In a sense, while there was some automation in terms of job postings, there were still some manual aspects of the job, of the job search. Uh, the recruiters had to search through thousands of resumes to find the best candidates and screen them. And then because there were so many resumes, it was easy to miss out on quality candidates. And sometimes the process took so long that candidates dropped out and found other positions. Today's world is fast paced and technology exists to help organizations automatically search for quality candidates and fill those pipelines. 
Then technology helps with the nurturing and communications with candidates and prioritizing which candidates to review first. So I'm wondering, Ian, what's your thoughts on recruitment marketing in that respect? Well, I mean, I think the stark, the stark contrast there to Post and Pray is that uh, if you're if you're going to market, so to speak, with uh, full recruitment marketing strategies, where um, each of your recruitment marketing vehicles is working with the other one, you're going to be able to fill those pipelines. And what that does is it puts you in control of what kinds of candidates uh, you're sourcing from and what kinds of candidates you're approaching, as opposed to the pro Post and Pray. So it really becomes about quality, quantity, and control, which translates into quality of hire, you know, once you've gone through that. And that's going to come up, I think, throughout this presentation. Yeah. You know, I really like that aspect. Control. That's really important. You know, you know posting and praying does not provide you with that much of an amount of a control aspect. So let's look how it ha recruitment marketing has the power to improve hiring metrics. So one of the most important findings from our recruitment marketing survey is that a majority of organizations agree that their recruitment marketing has improved their candidate quality, new hire engagement, new hire retention, and time to hire. Take a look at those percentages. I mean, those are big percentages. So I, I would even say that, yes, there's an agreement among the community that recruitment marketing improves hiring metrics. And I think there's several reasons for that phenomenon. First off, there's the quality of the employer brand messaging. Organizations are gaining an increased understanding of the importance of conveying brand messages that really reflect the organization's true employee value proposition. And by employee value proposition, I mean why employees and candidates want to work for your organization and what's the organization like. When you give an organ when you give candidates an authentic view of your organization, the candidates that would be most likely aligned with your organization's culture and values will be the ones that are attracted to your organization. And the ones that would not be a good fit will not be attracted to your organization. If effective employer branding helps attract the right talent that will be engaged with your organization. It also helps filter out the candidates that would not be a good fit. Second, through technology and best practices, the candidate experience is better. Candidates are receiving relevant content, content and the technology reflects the branding of the organization and recruiter candidate communication is so much better. In addition, in terms of time to hire, that improves also due to automation. Recruitment marketing technology like telemetry solution can help pipelines uh, can help keep pipelines filled and job posted on the on an automated basis. And in addition, search features and prioritization will help the recruiter to select the best talent first. So um, Ian, are you seeing any shifts in the market with respect to the impact of recruitment marketing? Well, it's interesting. I was just talking to a client yesterday, and uh, with the capabilities that they have in their, their recruitment marketing strategies about engaging candidates, really, uh, she basically said to me, look, I'm not that interested in the candidates that when we send content out or we, we push jobs out or job content out or branding content, I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not that interested in the ones that interest, immediately apply. I mean, that's great, and that's what we're here to do, but I'm really interested in the candidates that are engaging with us, whether that's through reading a piece of content, whether that's through opting into a talent network, job alerts, whatever it may be. Um, they're really starting to look at in candidate engagement, and so I think that's um, very much an indication of the promise of recruitment marketing. Um, new metrics, I think, are going to start to evolve. Things like candidate engagement, um, where uh, you know, especially as we shift from that kind of inter, uh, that kind of transactional approach, post get candidates back, to a more relationship-based approach, where it's more about let me engage this candidate, get to know them, uh, keep them warm over time, so that when and if a position comes up, uh, we're able to to source that candidate, you know, very easily because they're already uh, you know acquainted with us. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, let's see how we're going to improve organizational metrics besides hiring uh, metrics. And so as you can see by this chart, recruitment marketing impacts organizational performance. And the higher the level of maturity in terms of recruitment marketing, the more likely they will see improvement in their key metrics, especially for employee engagement and employee retention. In fact, organizations with a higher maturity level are 70% more likely to improve employee engagement and 73% more likely to uh, improve, see improvement in their employee retention than the low, those organizations at the lower level. So now I know I haven't yet explained the different maturity levels, and I'm going to go into the details in a moment. But for the sake of this slide, the recruitment marketing maturity levels go from one level one to level four. Obviously, level one and level two are at the lowest level, and they utilize just about no technology, or maybe they use an ATS and their practices are limited, and they're just beginning to develop, you know, some strategies, maybe. Uh, level three and four are much more mature, have standardized or optimized practices and strategies, and they use more advanced recruitment marketing technologies, or they might use the entire platform. And the main reason why recruitment marketing uh, maturity level matters so much is that it really does help organizations find the right talent that is aligned with the organization's values, culture, and mission. And as a result, employees and new hires are much more likely to be engaged and stay at the organization. In terms of the other organizational metrics like revenue and market penetration and customer retention, Having the right employees at the organization makes that organization better able to contribute revenue, contribute to these different metrics. And so in short, recruitment marketing contributes to organizational performance. And isn't that what we're all looking for? To be able to quantify the value of our recruitment marketing practices. But uh, however, uh, seeing the next only 10% have an optimized or level four recruitment marketing practice. And so when you think about it, if the impact is so big, why do so few organizations have an optimized recruitment marketing practice? We're going to dig in right now and take a look and try to figure that out. Let's look at that maturity model and see how organizations can improve recruitment of their recruitment marketing. And so here's a chart that makes it a little easier to understand the transition from level one recruitment marketing maturity level to a level four recruitment marketing maturity level. So uh, we base this uh, model on our research. And in order to assign our survey respondents to a level, we ask them a series of questions around their talent acquisition strategies, their recruitment marketing strategies and practices, their metrics, their staff, and the technology they use. And then we categorize each, each organization according to those levels. As one might expect, there were some organizations that sort of straddled the line. Perhaps they used an ATS, but um, they had no overarching talent acquisition strategy. We need to develop this scale, and the, the organizations that fell closest to that scale got put in that category. So let's go through each level rather quickly so we can figure this out. Uh, could you move back, Nissa? Sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, so level one, I think the casual level is kind of easy to understand. Basically, those organizations have no talent acquisition strategy, no recruitment marketing practices. They're only using maybe time to hire or cost per hire for metrics. They have limited or no staff, and they have no technology. Now, I know you're saying, oh, my God, there's organizations out there without any recruitment marketing technology or whatever, and you know what? There are, and most of the organizations at level one are small with less than 1,000 employees. Moving on to level two or the developing level, there the talent acquisition strategy is focused on short-term needs. Organizations are beginning to implement some practices like employee referrals. The organization is looking at quality of hire 
and the recruiters can fill some entry level positions and they have to outsource most of that recruiting and then in addition to tech for their technology they have uh, they only have an applicant tracking system and so most of the organizations in level two are also small but you do see a few mid-sized organizations and even fewer enterprise organizations and just so you know mid-size is defined as 1,000 to 9,999 employees and enterprise is 10,000 or more Moving on to level three, or the stable level, is where organizations, talent acquisition strategies have short and midterm range. They're developing their internal mobility and development practices. They have a high level of recruitment marketing practices, such as developing pipelines. The analytics are more sophisticated, and they're examining their source effectiveness. And they can really fill most positions internally and have quite a few recruitment marketing technology solutions. Here we see these, there's a shift in terms of organizational size, and this is mostly comprised of mid-size and enterprise organizations. And so the last level, level four, is the optimized level, and that's where the talent acquisition strategy, uh, strategies are fully integrated with organizational goals and the recruitment marketing practices are fully developed. Their brand messages are fully aligned with their EVP. And in terms of metrics, they're not just thinking about the current situation. They're looking to the future to identify and quantify trends that could impact their recruitment marketing and their, their, their talent pool. Their staff is extensive. They can have people on their staff uh, specializing in diversity or campus recruitment or employer branding, and et cetera. And finally, they have everything in terms of technology. They have a fully integrated recruitment marketing plat platform. And here, as you might expect, there are primarily enterprise organizations with some mid-size and only a few small organizations. So I think this is a very logical module, model, and you can look at this to see where you fit in terms of your recruitment marketing practices. And while net, not every organization can move to level four, there's still tremendous value in moving up one level, as we're going to see shortly. And so this is the finished form of the recruitment marketing model. And uh, the first thing to note is that there's only 10% of organizations at the bottom at level one and only 10% at level two, as we said before. And most are at level two or three. There's 41% at level two, which is the developing stage, and 39% at level three. And as you can see, as organizations move up the scale, they go from having inconsistent practices to efficient practices, to practices that are aligned with the business, to transformational practices. And when you think of it, that's what you really want, transformational practices. And after all, you know, I think recruitment marketing really does have the capability of being transformational. After all, you're responsible for creating and developing that workforce. And if there's any practice that can make give transformation, recruitment marketing is. And let's see how the transformation, uh, how this recruitment marketing impact grows. And so as you can see by this chart, recruitment marketing practices grows as the organization's maturity level increases. Take a look at the first set of bars as for uh, employee retention. Our research shows that organizations at level two maturity are more than twice as likely as level one to see improvement in revenue. And then when you go to level three, it's about a third higher, and level four is almost twice as likely as level three to see improvement in employee retention. For employee engagement, the likelihood of organizations to see improvement also increases with each maturity level. And the, the uh, jumps are particularly significant between levels one, two, and three. And then for con uh, customer retention, you see that there's a big impact from level four. So uh, there's big at value overall in incrementally increasing your recruitment maturity marketing levels, even up 
one level. So Stephen, I'm curious, what's been your experience with organizations moving from one level to another level? Well, I think first of all, you know, as, as we engage with clients, uh, you know, the the numbers mirror our experience, right? In terms of the sweet spot for us as clients that are in level two, moving to level three, or level three, you know, either growing within that level or moving into level four, those are the the clients that are really looking to bring a, a platform in. So. What we discover is that, again, you're not going to make a wholesale jump from one level to the next. Uh, you're going to begin to make some incremental changes along the way and then find yourself at you know, a, a new level over time. So, you know, when we talk about, uh, you know, some real, uh, you know, quick wins or, or uh, smaller changes in that, in that progression, I like to see clients who, uh, you know, bring in a, a platform and then look for the quick wins. So we've got healthcare clients, for instance, who, you know, will, um, will have quick wins around, you know, nursing hiring and, uh, and, and pushing uh, candidates in, into, uh, into that process. Some of our clients will say, listen, you know, we're so busy, change management adoption is very difficult uh, they'll continue to let the organization do some BAU uh, work but then they'll set a focus group aside to drive some uh, you know really uh, deep wins uh, you know separate from the domain group and start to see you know some positive movements there um, I just heard from a client recently uh, this past week that went out very specifically using a project to try to push themselves up a little bit and using a recruitment marketing platform you know they were able to uh, uh, to, to, to capture uh, 85 candidates and 39 hires in six hours right so this is obviously in, in the retail sector but by using a different kind of a, a, a target now they're they're learning to use the tools and kind of grow within that so sometimes you have to see the small wins and let them grow into the changes yeah that's, that's great. That's terrific. So what's, I think you might be interested uh, in best practices for recruitment marketing. So continuing on with our comparison of the organizations with lower level recruitment marketing maturity levels versus higher level recruitment marketing maturity levels, you can see that logically based on our model, those organizations at a higher maturity level or more likely than those at a lower level to be implementing most of the recruitment marketing practices listed in this chart. However, a few things do jump out at me on this chart. The first is the use of CRM, second, source to hire, and third, diversity and inclusion. So let's look at uh, candidate relationship management practices or CRM. As you can see by this chart, there's a big delta or change between the percent of lower level maturity organizations to higher level maturity organizations. And CRM, you know, that's, you know, CRM really represents the foundation of recruitment marketing. Without CRM, you're not really marketing your positions. You're simply posting and praying, and that's not marketing. With CRM, you're able to build talent pipelines based on your needs so that those uh, you can have a talent pipeline related to a position or a location or a type of candidates like college recruits. And then you can systematically plan your outreach through email and social campaigns, not just one-off emails. And then you can measure the effectiveness of each campaign and decide on the approach that works best. See, in my opinion, CRM is a heck of a lot more effective than posting and praying. Now let's look at having source to hire analytics. That data can really help with identifying where the bottlenecks are in your recruitment and hiring process. And when you think about it, some organizations have really uh, complex workflows. And the workflows can vary from position to position so having the right analytics and metrics by workflow is really important, and technology helps there also. And finally, let's talk a little bit about diversity and inclusion. If your organization does not have any practices, goals, or strategies around how to recruit diverse candidates, you're simply not going to be choosing from the most complete selection of the best candidates. You're limiting your results. Strategies for diversity and inclusion can be at the grassroots level, developing relationships, 
with the association and groups with diverse members. It also can be at the technological level, recruiting from sites that have a substantial percentage of diverse members. So, Stephen, I'm wondering what jumps out at you with this slide? Well, you know, what jumps out at me is, is again, taking a look at all of these, what I like to say, you know, capabilities within uh, recruitment marketing and asking a couple of questions. So within each of these capabilities, number one, how deep really are these capabilities? So let's take a look at CRM, for instance. You know, is the organization running what, uh, what I like to call tactical CRM? So you've got a couple of, uh, you know, a recruiter headhunter type sitting with a, a seat or two um, and and are, are you know doing some purple squirrel recruiting etc uh, that's very tactical CRM and it's very effective in those uh, in those situations or is CRM really part of an overall and larger strategy that's that's driving the whole engine of recruitment marketing at, at, and uh, and, 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 and driving all of, of your recruiting. So uh, it's the difference between, you, you know, are, are we tactical with these or are we really strategic in allowing for all of this to drive, uh, drive capabilities? Um, and then secondly is what's the integration between these capabilities. So how well do they do they work together? When somebody lands on my, you know, career site, um, you know, can I capture who they are? Can I drive that into the CRM? And then can I start to do targeting and, and retargeting to them, for instance? Diversity and inclusion is a is a, a great story. Um, you know, back when I was running recruitment operations, uh, diversity and inclusion was sort of an ad hoc, something that somebody else oftentimes outside of talent acquisition did. If you take when you look at recruitment marketing practices and the tools that are here, diversity and inclusion should be a focus for your entire uh, 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 you know, set of tools, right? So that's not something that happens apart from, but it's something that happens within your CRM, within your advertising and attraction, within your candidate experience, so that the, the slates that you are bringing forward for your jobs now are going to be almost naturally inclusive because diversity and inclusion is not an ad hoc practice. Um, it, it is a, um, a focus you're bringing to your entire uh, recruitment practice. So those are the things that jump out at me, right? How, how strategic is CRM versus just simply tactical, number one? And then number two, how do all of these things work together to drive the results you want to drive? Hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, let's look now at technologies, the current technologies that are in place. So here's a list of recruitment marketing technologies that organizations have in place. And of course, level three and at level three and level four, organizations are much more likely to have those technologies than level one and level two. But, you know, these technologies could represent a point solution. It could be part of a platform. So take, for instance, a CRM. CRM already has talent networks. They have social recruiting. They have sourcing recruit solutions. They have employee referrals and so much more. And then there's organizations that just maybe have a social recruiting solution. So there's the, the, the different ways in which organizations approach these technology functionalities. And so, in my opinion, the best practices is to have those functionalities all in one platform and not in separate point solutions. So having one platform improves the user experience and facilitates implementing strategies. For instance, if you're thinking about really engaging one of your specific talent networks, it's going to be so much easier to create multiple scheduled campaigns within that one CRM solution than it would be to do it in point solutions. And, you know, I know kind of this that this has been debated a lot, but Ian, what are your thoughts on this platform versus multiple point solutions? Well, I mean, I always point back to traditional marketing, right, who's been down this road in terms of automating uh, marketing practices. So the, the, the model there and the analogy there is, you know, as, as, these marketing tools became available for reaching out to potential customers and communicating with potential customers, et cetera. Um, you know, they were all very good, and uh, I think the, the 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 push was to get the best of breed in every single one. Uh, but it very quickly became evident that 
um, you know, you're gathering powerful data as you're interacting with potential uh, clients and customers. And if you have them in separate data um, data silos, you didn't get that sort of closed loop view of everything you're doing. So as a communication goes out or, or an advertisement goes out, um, you know, if you're having multiple different systems kind of dealing with that client's journey as they move through all the stages before they become a client, just like a candidate goes through stages before they become a candidate, then you're really missing out on the on the crucial kinds of insights that you can get to improve what you're doing. Doing. So definitely platforms became uh, the way to go in traditional marketing, um, even if you're sacrificing some best of breed uh, and making some compromises to get that sort of closed loop. So that's, that, that's certainly my view on it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So now let's look at technology in another way. So this next chart shows um, Techno the demand for recruitment marketing technology functionalities. And these this represents organizations that do not have these specific recruitment marketing technologies, but need them. And as you can see, there's plenty of interest for these functionalities among organizations at a lower level. Obviously, those at a higher maturity level are more likely to have those functionalities and therefore do not need them. I find it particularly interesting that there's so much interest among the lower maturity level in, in talent networks, CRM, sourcing tools. That means plenty of organizations are looking to increase their effectiveness of the recruitment marketing. So now let's look at metrics. And these are the most important metrics for measuring recruitment marketing effectiveness. And not surprisingly, time to hire is at the top of the list. And organizations always seem to want to improve time to hire and recruitment marketing technology can really help with that metric by automating the recruitment process, filling candidate pipelines, identifying quality candidates, automatically posting jobs, managing communications, and so far. So, I mean, that's one metric that really, you know, helps with recruitment marketing technology. And then comes quality hires and quality candidates that are just about neck and neck. And based on our talent acquisition, acquisition research, quality of hire is typically determined based on the new hire's fit within the organization, hiring manager satisfaction, time to productivity, and retention levels. The authenticity of employer brand messages and how and when, where you convey them has a, has a big impact on the quality of candidates and hires. And as we saw before in the first few slides, that recruitment marketing has a big impact on quality candidates and hires. And then we come down to cost per hire, application for posting, interview schedule, and so forth. These metrics can really help your organization manage the effectiveness of your recruitment campaign, your budget, and help you identify any bottleneck in your workflows. Now let's look at the people involved in managing recruitment marketing. And so not surprisingly, recruiters and talent acquisition leaders uh, play significant roles in recruitment marketing. But what's somewhat surprising is that for 22%, uh, they have marketing professionals that play a big role in recruitment marketing. And you'll see why in the next slide. And I think this chart that's coming, yes, this chart that's coming up is key and explains why perhaps some organizations have not moved up in the maturity level and why marketing expertise may be needed to help with recruitment marketing. So we asked respondents whether they felt their HR teams and recruiters were able to effectively manage their recruitment marketing. And what we found out overall is that only 47% feel they have the skills and competencies internally to, internal to their HR and recruiting team to effectively conduct recruitment marketing. And that the rest are looking uh, within their organization for help with marketing, or they outsource recruitment marketing, or they're looking to hire someone with recruitment marketing. Now, if you look at it, and I just mentioned level ones and le um, overall, but level, if you look at it by levels, level three and four seem to be better able to uh, have the skills internally to conduct the recruitment marketing skills. And so, um, I, from my 
this chart brings to mind a question that I'd like to debate with Stephen. You know, are recruiters marketers? And from my perspective, recruiters are marketers, but for the most part, they have to do their marketing on a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one basis. And recruitment marketing technology can help narrow down that outreach to the candidates so that the recruiters are speaking to the most qualified candidates and not wasting their time. Another aspect is running a recruitment marketing campaign. And in that area, I think this chart points to the fact that there may be some additional training that is needed to help recruiters run campaigns. But Stephen, what's your thoughts on recruiters and whether they're marketers? Well, I, you know what? Um, personally, since I started uh, 18 years ago, just slightly before resumes ended up on the internet, uh, as a headhunter in uh, in Manhattan, um, I've always seen recruiters as either marketers or more precisely salespeople, right? Um, you know, the, the ability to sell candidates on jobs and to sell and close uh, hiring managers on candidates, that's always been a key skill for very competent recruiters. Recently, I've come to see a couple of different nuances to that, and I'll just quickly explain. Now, you know, we've got Ian on, on the call today. Ian is our head of marketing at Telemetry. Now, I support uh, uh, the sales team as well from a, a solutions perspective and I see the difference between what Ian does in terms of generating interest uh, uh, you know getting uh, leads generated etc and what our sales guys do in terms of developing the one-to-one -one relationship with our potential clients and help uh, closing you know closing deals I see the same thing in recruiting um, where there are beginning to we're beginning to see sort of two levels of uh, of skill set around here one is around marketing from a more a larger more strategic perspective right how do we segment our database how do we send mars uh, messages out to the, to people so that they respond how do we increase conversion rates right how do we create those leads and then with the recruiters they continue to have that uh, more individual sales uh, capability to then touch the the leads that are coming in, if you will, right? Uh, develop a deeper relationship with them and help close them toward you know, qualify them and close them toward that ultimate decision. So I'm seeing within organizations both of those needs and both of those skill sets in smaller organizations. You'll see them all in the same person or or persons. In larger organizations, you'll start to see them uh, split out a little bit where you know somebody who's got more of a strategic marketing perspective they're the ones that are actually doing the larger email campaigns creating uh, uh, you know, career sites and event uh, uh, you know recruitment opportunities and you know driving traffic refreshing the career sites or I'm sorry the, the, the databases and the recruiters who are uh, then following up and reaching so each organization is gonna be a little bit different but no doubt marketing and sales key uh, uh, requirements in terms of a skill set for uh, for the recruitment staff. Yeah. Great, terrific. So let's go on to see who's involved in uh, recruitment marketing. And so let's look at who's involved in the purchase decision. And so obviously, um, HR leadership, talent acquisition leadership, and just executive and senior level leadership are in, really involved in that purchase decision. But what I was a little surprised to see that only 16% um, were use have IT involved in that decision. And I thought that was kind of surprising. And I think it's important early on in the process to get their buy-in because you will need it in terms of the type of support they may provide to you, any integration uh, needed, et cetera. So that was a little surprising to me. And then moving on, uh, let's look at the budget. And so the good news here is that 36% of the organizations expect an increase in the recruitment marketing budget, and that budget includes technology. Few see it as a decrease, and uh, most see it as the budget will stay the same. And I think that this trend towards increasing a budget speaks to the value recruitment marketing can deliver to the organization and that our economy is doing so well. So what are the key takeaways from this webinar? There are three big points. First, 
Recruitment marketing improves hiring metrics and contributes to organizational performance. You remember we were talking about time to hire, employee engagement, and so forth. Second, there's significant value in moving up the recruitment marketing maturity model one level at a time because as we saw, the impact on hiring practices and organizational performance grows with each level. So for those of you at level one, aim to move at level two and so forth. And um, then finally, to achieve an optimized recruitment marketing practice, you need to get all your ducks in a row. You need to have a fully developed talent acquisition strategy that's aligned with your organization's goals. You need a fully developed recruitment marketing strategy and practices and metrics in place. And those metrics need to look forward to trends that will impact your recruitment marketing in the future and your organization in the future. And you also need to have staff that address all the specific needs, like diversity in campus recruiting. And of course, you need to have a fully integrated recruitment marketing platform. And now I'm pleased to introduce Ian and Stephen to give their perspective on how technology can propel recruitment marketing. Yeah, so just to continue the conversation, and thank you, Daria, um, uh, a, a, a around recruitment marketing, I just want to give you an overview of kind of what a system looks like. We'll talk about telemetry, um, but you get a better sense of what's, uh, what comes along with um, recruitment marketing uh, systems, uh, as well as some, some insights into how clients are using it and some of the results that uh, they're getting. So first of all, <clears throat> excuse me, just quickly. You know, we look at telemetry, and when we explain it to people how it works, uh, we essentially sit between your internal sources of talent, which are your past applicants that are in your ATS, your employees, referrals, all those types of things that are coming internally that you already have. Um, and, and we sit between that and all your external sources of talent. So that's candidate databases, email campaigns, job boards, recruitment agencies, all the, all the, the sources that you go to to generate interest in your jobs uh, and get candidates. Um, we take all of that and we build a shared talent pool between your ATS and all your internal sources of talent and your external sources of talent and give your organization one place to go to uh, to, to grow that pool um, and then to run campaigns out of that pool to push jobs out in front of all your sources and to pull candidates in from all your uh, candidate uh, database sources. And at the end of the day, you know, we're just here to get more of the right people to apply for the right jobs, which, as we know from the survey, is a, is a deep concern. So the next slide. Steve, why don't you talk a little bit about how this fits in with the talent acquisition uh, technology stack? Sure, absolutely be happy to. So I, I think it's important to understand that when you're looking at recruitment marketing, uh, this does not equate with ATS. Um, at, don't get me wrong, there are some ATSs that, have better recruitment marketing capabilities than some other ATSs, uh, particularly you know in in, in areas like uh, you know job distribution or you know uh, uh, you know single emails and and things like that. But to really get serious about recruitment marketing, you're going to want to have a platform that sits on top of the ATS number one. In other words, it's it's sort of separate from there's there's a a wall between them, but they're also deeply integrated. So uh, in terms of looking at a system, you know, from a telemetry perspective, that platform uh, includes things like, uh, you know, career site content capability and, and, and uh, ability to publish those career sites out, the ability to, to distribute jobs out to, you know, job advertising, be it job boards or pay-per-click advertising or social, you name it, right? The ability to search, you know, to, to build a proprietary talent pool and to search and segment that talent pool in an intelligent way and then be able to engage them through CRM. Um, also, the ability to just let people join your talent network, right, uh, and be able to to, uh, to to build relationships in that way. Um, and then, you know, we believe that conversion is also important because ultimately you want the right people to apply for the right job at the right time. 
So if they come to your career site and all of a sudden, you know, they're forced to, to create a login or, you know, they got a really clunky application process, then all that work you do in terms of recruitment marketing uh, is going to get lost. So from our perspective, those are all the components of a really strong uh, uh, recruitment marketing platform. And you can see how it sits apart from, but is really deeply related to if you have deep integration, uh, you know, the, the ATS. And next slide. So what does that look like? We talked a little bit about, um, you know, incremental wins and, and, and moving from, uh, you know, various stages to the next stage within the recruitment marketing uh, capability maturity. Um, and, and, and it's really important to understand that um, you can get those wins with sort of a modular approach. So a, a lot of the people that we work with, a lot of the organizations that we work with um, will uh, implement modules and focus on one aspect of their recruitment marketing and grow from there. So to that, sort of as telemetry is broken down, we have a source and CRM module which Stephen talked about. You can build that centralized talent pool so that every time you get a response to a job ad or an agency submits a potential candidate, it goes into your talent pool and you own that person from that point out. You're not going out and buying that candidate again and of course it gives you the ability to then very intuitively source from the, that source um, as well as run campaigns and nurture relationships, etc. We have a job broadcast module which allows you to automate the process of posting jobs and I would say that uh, most of our clients have all of their jobs posted once a rec is opened and, and, and approved. Uh, the, the system lets them know which are their best sources by job type and those automatically get sent out to the appropriate boards which by the way includes free boards and diversity and inclusion boards um, so that you're covered and you're always uh, and you can then look at the results of those uh, without a recruiter ever getting involved and of course we do sort of traditional job posting uh, where you can push jobs out to multiple jobs at one time manually multiple boards um, we have a career site module which allows you to take control of your career site host your career site and make changes to it without the need for IT resources um, it optimizes your career site for mobile and I say optimize not enable because mobile is an entirely different experience and just because you may have a career site that shows up in a small form factor like a phone doesn't mean it's really really useful for those people and there's a lot of uh, a, a lot of ways that we make it much more useful for that mobile experience um, in the same vein we have an apply uh, module which can bypass your ATS as apply and give you much more flexibility in your applications. You can target them, brand them, um, make them more personalized to different job families as well as again optimize them for that mobile experience um, and, and even do things like two-step applies where you gather candidate information from a social profile or a resume up front and then you email them the full application later on in the process. Um, so really looking at that conversion aspect, as, as Steven said, and really optimizing that. Uh, so you're getting higher conversion and more of the right candidates. And then finally, that, the underpinning of all of these, the entire platform, is that analytics layer that lets you know at every stage what, what your sources, the efficiency of your sources, whether that's job boards, resume databases, um, you know uh, any uh, any type social networks you can you can look at this from source to hire and multiple steps in between where your efficiency is at getting people to look at your jobs respond to your job start an application complete an application and ultimately all the way through to to hire as well as all the activities that are happening around gaining new candidates so which recruiters are the most successful? What are they doing on a daily basis? You can analyze all that. It really becomes an engine that can drive optimization of your entire uh, recruitment operations uh, processes. And then finally, if we can switch slides, I wanted to run through just some little snapshots of how our clients are using uh, recruitment marketing uh, technology to implement their strategies and maybe some of the results they are getting. So. Um, first one is a global bank. Um, it's about 80,000 people employed by this bank and 
upon implementing telemetry, uh, in the first year they grew their talent pool by 87% and are experiencing a 10% monthly increase in that growth. So that's one of the first things you want to do is you want to develop that centralized talent pool. You want to grow it. You want to make sure that all your activities are growing that 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 pool. Um, and they're certainly seeing that. As, as I said, they're getting all 80% of their jobs are getting posted automatically with no recruiters having to be involved. All they have to do is respond to the uh, to the applications that come in. Um, they were able to reduce their advertising costs by two and a half million dollars uh, within the first year. Um, recently, they've rolled out uh, the application module, and they've seen an almost doubling of the number of applicants that they're getting. Their conversion rates have almost doubled, um, which is a huge, huge um, in, uh, increase and in, in benefit in terms of cost per candidate. Uh, and they've increased their candidate traffic to, uh, to their jobs uh, by doing some more advanced practices. Um, content marketing. They've established a blog and rather than pushing jobs out to social and pushing jobs out to through emails and, and on their career site, they're really creating uh, content around those jobs that's interesting to candidates, whether that's uh, supporting their brand, whether that's, um, you know, content that uh, that is, uh, you know, again, interesting to the type of candidate that uh, would be interested in the jobs and then they're attaching their jobs to that content in the form of articles and then pushing it out through social pushing it out through their career site etc and they're seeing uh, some pretty compelling numbers in terms of increased engagement and uh, increased applicants per job you know uh, Ian, a... Ian, Ian, it, it dawned on me as well incidentally this specific client uh, just last year uh, realized that over one third of their hires were as a direct result of data that was sitting in their CRM uh, over the course of the year. So, you know, a lot of this activity is about getting advertising out and helping conversion rates and getting the message out. But again, it tells you the importance of integrating CRM to that whole solution as well. So it's a real, it's a really, uh, it's a really fun story. Good point. And and by the same token, candidate experience doesn't only happen on your career site. It happens within your CRM as you're reaching out to candidates and sending messages out to them. So they're really looking at next phase. Let's really look at our candidate experience from that apl application, from that career site, from that content, and, and let's make sure that it's flowing through all our recruiter communications uh, through the CRM. So that's kind of what's next up for them. Um, we have a prominent national retailer that's using that centralized CRM to to take the the candidates that they know about, segment them, past applicants, uh, candidates that recruiters have gathered up in their, that are in their talent pool, and really using that to drive job fair attendance. Um, and uh, they were able to recently drive 315 hires in six hours by really utilizing that campaigning functionality within their CRM to then drive uh, the success of that particular program. Um, and, and similarly, they're using their, their talent network campaigns, those passive candidates that opt in to, to hear more about company and jobs but don't apply, uh, to, to drive those to store level managers to then uh, use to recruit from, um, and they've uh, been able to generate 30,000 new candidates in two months. Um, we have a top university that uses our career site module, and they've been able to increase their, their career site traffic by 500%, uh, and they've seen a 50% increase in applicants per job just by focusing on that candidate experience and making it mobile, making it compelling, targeted, personalized. Uh, and finally, a leading wireless carrier um, is engaging over 11 million candidates every month uh, with their centralized can, uh, CRM, and they're driving nurture campaigns out, and they're they're using those the people within that talent pool to uh, to again um, send out messages, get people to apply for jobs, and and develop relationships. And they're also using pipelines within their CRM to by location and by job interest to create pipelines for each of their individual stores so that store managers, when they're ready to hire, they can log into telemetry and they already have a ranked list of potential candidates by, by job type uh, there for them that's constantly being updated and uh, increased through their 
national recruiter's use of telemetry. So those are some of the kind of use cases and maybe some results that can get you some, some sense of, of how uh, recruitment marketing fits in and how it's being used. And I know we're running up against time, so I'll stop talking now. Okay, Nisha, do we have any questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. That was great. We do have a few questions that have come in. Um, the first one is from Bob, and he asks, do you think there is still a role for outside agencies such as headhunters and independent, independent of the technology to use uh, to re recruit and market? Just wondering if those conversion rates reflect reflected as a useful and not so useful resource. Well, I'll, I'll jump in on that. Um, yeah, certainly as part of uh, having that centralized CRM and having the ability to push jobs out to various channels, one of the channels that telemetry supports is agencies because we want to have an automated way for you to be able to push uh, jobs out to, to agencies and headhunters um, and manage that whole process and manage it from, a, from a which agencies are approved for recruiters to use, what's our budget, where are we on that budget, are you authorized to push jobs out, all the way through to when you get those candidates back in from agencies, you know what agency they came from and you are able to track um, how uh, effective those uh, particular candidates are uh, in your process. You're able to know immediately if you already have that candidate in your talent pool, because one of the big values is once we have our, you in our talent pool, we, pool, we own you, so we're not going to pay again for that same candidate. Um, and, and so you get a, 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 a re it becomes one of the channels. You know, it may seem traditional and sort of old-fashioned, but it's really a part of recruitment marketing uh, today and tomorrow and into the future. So we've integrated into that whole um, recruitment marketing mix. Great. Um, I know we are right now past uh, 2 o'clock, but I was hoping that you could hang on for just one more question from Tiffany, if that was possible. Or sure. Awesome. So Tiffany asked, some companies lose qualified candidates because their online application freezes, creating frustration. Is it the technology or what is the solution to this? We're all waiting to see who's going to jump in. I'll jump in. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it varies from vendor to vendor. Most of the organizations we work with are using um, applicant tracking system, uh, apply processes and apply workflows. Um, and, and applicant tracking systems do a lot of things really well. And some are better than others at, in terms of their technology and how it integrates with their career sites and, and, and how, um, you know, how difficult it is uh, or, or how rigid the process is for candidates to apply f through. Um, you know, the, what we see is where third parties are getting involved and replacing those processes, um, we're seeing higher uh, conversion rates, um, which, which means uh, on, on some level the technology is working uh, better in terms of uh, not freezing, uh, but certainly working better in terms of simplifying the process, targeting it towards those individual uh, candidates so you don't have a one-size-fits-all application. You can create multiple applications depending on the job family uh, and, and then you really give them the tools to be able to do it on a mobile device or, and regardless of device, be able to simplify the process through uh, social profile usage, resume parsing, um, two-step applications. There's just a lot of flexibility that you get that can increase those conversion rates um, where applicant tracking systems have you know, a lot of hiring things that they need to be really good at. Um, and again, some are better than others on the candidate facing stuff. Uh, a lot of the applicant tracking systems we work with um, just, you know, they do a fine job of uh, applications, um, but it's not their focus. It's not uh, something that they, uh, you know, uh, spend a lot of uh, time and, and, and effort on. And it takes a while to, to bring a whole system forward in terms of capability. Um, and, uh, you know, not oftentimes applica applications aren't your, your top priority as you're, as you're bringing all those hiring capabilities, uh, you know, up to, up to date and enhancing them. Great, thank you so much, um, and you're welcome, Tiffany. She says thank you for answering her question. Um, and again, I just want to remind you guys, if you want to grab a copy of the, 
the presentation right now, you can download it in the handout section. Otherwise, within 48 hours, we'll be sending out an email with access to the recording and slides and also um, announce the winner of the $250 Amazon gift card. And I want to say again, thank you to Daria, Ian, and Stephen for taking time out today to explain more about recruitment marketing. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.